I just wanna praise you. Come on. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Bless this and Bless glory. So most of us know Elder Joanne, and most of us know that she recently got married, and some of us know that her new sister-in-law has, was diagnosed with terminal cancer. In fact, uh, her sister-in-law was told just prior to Joanne's departure from here that she should leave the Dominican Republic because if she stayed there, she would die because there were no interventions they could do to even treat her cancer. And so they advised her to come to America and, and to seek a research hospital that, that maybe would do something innovative as a last resort. And so she came, and, and, and I've been talking with Joanne the whole time she's been gone, and they've been trying to find her a hospital to take her. It's not easy because the progno prognosis is not good. Was not good and um, she doesn't have medical insurance. And so in June when Bill Miller was here, Joanne had already left but she came back. She brought her family with her and she brought Melissa with her. And Bill Miller is the conference president was preaching that day. Some of you will remember it. And and I saw them come in, and I was like, there's Joanne, there's Leo. And then I was kind of like, don't, don't tell Joanne this, but I was kind of like, who's that other girl Leo's got his arm around? Like, it was Melissa, his sister. <laughs> so I, I asked, I think, Lori, who is that? She, oh, that's, that's Melissa. Now, I'd been praying for Melissa. And Bill had already began a sermon, and I was just really, I've never really felt that convicted that, I needed to stop the service and pray right there. And if it had been anybody other than the conference president, I probably would have. <laughs> and I probably should have anyways, but I didn't. But, but, but what I did is as soon as Bill sat down, I said, Bill, see that young adult over there? We need to pray for her. Now, right after service, Bill Miller, the conference president, myself, and, and all the elders were present. We, we gathered right right in this spot. We just gathered right here. I think Marvin was over there. He's playing the piano, played some music for us. And we prayed. Everyone cried. Melissa cried. Her mom cried. Joanne cried. And I was saying to Bill afterwards, I was just saying, you know, like, it's so hard when you have those moments. This is why our vision statement matters. It's so hard when you have those moments. Like, when someone's been told it's terminal, you know, what, what I'm saying to him is just as a pastor, like, what do you pray for? I mean, like, you know God can heal the person, but you know that God also can't heal everyone. So we just pray for God's will. And we were just talking, anyways, about how hard that is. And so I've been following it with Joanne now the vision statement, to become a house of prayer and healing that encompasses people of all nations, the unity of truth through scripture, and that's all we could do. A young adult left the Dominican Republic and came to Solid Rock for a house of prayer and healing. And so we prayed for her, and so earlier this week I got a text message from Joanne, and she's like, oh, I just wanted to update you, Pastor, that uh, I found, we found a research hospital, university hospital up here, who are willing to work on a treatment plan for Melissa. Amen, Amen right? Amen. Amen. Like, so we prayed, we gathered, we cried, and it took a long time. Finally, a research hospital accepted her. And then yesterday morning, I got another text from Joanne again. This one was a little bit more urgent. She said, Pastor, you're not going to believe this. 
It's crazy. You know how Durani is. <laughs> I'm like, what? Melissa went to her second follow-up appointment and they read her scans and she doesn't have cancer. You know me, I'm like, what did the doctor say? <laughs> She's like, no, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. She doesn't have cancer. I'm like, yeah, 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 I, I believe you. What did the doctor say? They said, Go live your life. We can't treat what's not there. There's no cancer on the scans. You don't know. Like, you just don't know. I mean, it was just right here. Like, I'm standing in the spot. We just gathered and we wept and we prayed. And we didn't pray that God would necessarily physically heal her because that was too presumptuous for me. We prayed that his will be done. We prayed that if he wanted to, he could. But he knew what was best. And we left it in her hands. Now, now, now Melissa's family are sure she was healed at that moment. She's had no treatment. In fact, the reason they did the scans was to see how the cancer had progressed. They believe she was healed here at that moment. And they believe that the University Hospital in uh, Pennsylvania was only God's tool to affirm his power at Solid Rock. So, I had it here someplace. I was ready, but... This is what jo Joanne wrote. And, and it goes to this. It goes to the mission and the vision of the church. Just, this is what she wrote. Like, just, just think of Joanne's voice. She, Melissa, she's doing great, Pastor. I'm going to do my best, Joanne. She, Melissa, she's doing great, Pastor. It's crazy. Please, share it with the church. Share the testimony with the church. Solid Rock ministered to a young adult from the Dominican Republic. And God healed her. Right on mission. Praise the Lord. Some people ask me, why don't we repeat the mission statement and the vision statement every single time we're here? That's why! We need to know what it looks like when God is answering what we're doing. And we have a mission statement to go make disciples, and we have a vision statement that tells us what it looks like when we do it, and we know we did it because we saw the vision statement happen. God.